When I first met Adebayo, one of the things I immediately noticed about him was his energy. This incredible optimism that he had, like he would always want to wring out the best of every moment and he would always ask, who would make the world a better place if not us? And then he would pause and then the corners of his lips would lift up into this pearly white smile. I mean, Adebayo loved to smile. And I would often joke with him that one day I'd see him on the ad of a toothpaste commercial. And then he would say, well, Amy, you know, the darker the complexion, the brighter and whiter the smile. <laughs> Adebayo um, was really just such a character and he's such a bright personality. And once I got to know him better, I learned why. See, 15 years ago, Adebayo um, is from Nigeria and 15 years ago, he almost died from a single dose of fake asthma medicine. What his father thought he had been purchasing from the local pharmacy was Ventolin medication, but what he actually purchased was poison. And after consuming it, Adebayo immediately fell into a coma for 21 days. 21 days, guys. That's three weeks, about 500 hours, 30,000 minutes, 2 million seconds of being trapped in a coma. 2 million seconds of straddling that profound line between life and death. 2 million seconds of agonizing pain for family and friends who don't know whether or not the patient will even live to see the next day. Now luckily, Adebayo did pull through, woke up from his coma, was afforded a second opportunity at life and became one of my closest friends. But most of the victims of counterfeit medicine, just like the ones that Adebayo took, most victims of counterfeit medicine aren't as fortunate and most victims never wake up from their coma. If I were to ask you to tell me, of the two pills shown here on the screen, which one is real and which one is fake, how would you tell? I mean, could you tell? Sure, there's 50% chance that you'll get it right, but there's also 50% chance that you'll get it wrong. And the consequences of getting it wrong in this case are absolutely deadly. And yet this is a game or a Russian roulette on life that people in emerging countries have to play every single day. One million people die from fake drugs every year. And in some countries, over 50% of the medicine that you can buy off the shelves in local pharmacies are either fake or substandard. So this problem is really, really big. And in order to explain how it all works, first we've got to understand now what a fake drug is and what it'll take to solve the problem and how can we go about using the latest technologies to combat fake drugs. And I'm so glad that all of you are here today because what we're about to learn in the next few minutes might just one day save a life. A drug is considered counterfeit when it doesn't have all the good stuff that it promises or it replaces all the good stuff with the bad stuff. And if you purchase medicine online, earlier we got the statistics, take a look at what that percentage looks like. Here, all the um, drugs with the X's are fake. As you can begin to count or imagine, 60% of the drugs that you purchase online are either real or fake, and so, or, or either are all fake. And so how would you know that the drug that you've got is real? Well, some science and some new technology is finally helping us solve that problem. And so right now we're going to learn what a counterfeit drug is. So we learned earlier the counterfeit drug are um, fake drugs and within the best case scenario, these drugs can really be filled with substances that um, are relatively harmless to the body. These are substances that pass through the body without much damage. This would be something like either chalk or plastic. And that would be the best case scenario, but who would ever want to eat chalk or plastic, right? In the worst case scenario, a fake drug would be filled with something like boric acid or heavy toxic metal floor wax, and this could really lead to anything from allergic reactions to serious injury to death. And so really that's what we're dealing with, guys. It's an enemy that's hard to see, difficult to detect, lives all around the world, and can either give us the sniffles or simultaneous total art. Uh, organ failure. So clearly we've got our work cut out for us. Now any problem of this magnitude exists for many, many reasons. And the first reason is that fake drugs are really, really hard to test for. 
Global estimates suggest that the total um, market for global pharmaceutical drugs to be $320 billion. And to give you an idea of how large $320 billion is, that's pretty much the GDP of the state of Arizona. Yep, this entire state, 7 million people. And to give you an idea of how that market fares with other illegal drug markets, well, the worldwide combined total of the heroin and cocaine market is only $160 billion. And I know $160 billion is still a really big dollar amount, but when you compare that to the size of counterfeit drugs, it's really only half. And so if you're involved in the legal, illegal drug market and you're looking to make a quick buck or two, you don't really care about repeat customers, guess which market you're going to choose. And the reason why this market is so big is because fake drugs are really, really hard to um, detect. Oftentimes, it's not just the pill themselves that look absolutely identical to the original medicine, but it's also the packaging itself. And the fake drug industry is just becoming more and more advanced nowadays that even medical professionals cannot tell the difference. I mean, I certainly wasn't able to when I was traveling abroad. Just to share a little bit about my story, four years ago when I was traveling abroad in China, one day I had a night out and went home with a mild stomach pain. And so I thought, hey, you know, I'm just going to go to the local pharmacy and purchase some pain relievers. I ended up purchasing the equivalent of China equivalent of Pepto-Bismol. And after one week of taking it, not only was I not getting better, but I felt that my body was getting weaker and my symptoms were getting worse. And it wasn't until I took myself to the hospital and showed the packaging of the pills that I had already swallowed to the doctors that they informed me that the drugs that I had taken were fake. Who knew what was in those drugs? I mean, I just know that it didn't kill me, but Really fortunately, it helped me realize one very, very painful fact, and that's that it can happen to anyone, anywhere. Now, I know all of us are probably sitting here in our seats thinking, sure, counterfeit drugs seem like a really big problem abroad, but I should be here safe at home, right? I mean, the stuff that I get from the pharmacy down the street, I mean, those drugs have all been tested, right? And the answer to this question is that it's, it's complicated. See, your chances of encountering a fake drug here in the United States is lower than that of a third world country. But uh, and to give you some ideas, the global drug counterfeit supply into the United States is actually less than 1%. So one pill out of 100, if even that many. But that one pill can still be the one pill that you take. And when you consider that 40% of the world's prescription drugs happen here in the United States, that combined with the fact that many active ingredients are produced in countries with counterfeiting drug problems, you start getting the sense that even here at home, we're not 100% safe. And good luck if you're buying medication online. Let's take Viagra, for example. Believe it or not, it's the most counterfeited drug in the United States. Take a guess, what percentage of Viagra sold online is fake? Any takers? Yep, 60, oh, I heard 70% out there and we're all really close, it is 70%. 70% of Viagra sold online is either fake or substandard. And so if you are looking to purchase Viagra online at a really low price without a prescription, and I know that, or any um, shady drug online without a prescription at a really cheap price, please be careful because more than likely that drug will be fake and you'll have no way of knowing what's actually in it. So what have we learned so far? Fake drugs are deeply lucrative and they're really hard to detect, but easy to buy. There's one more reason why this problem has become so big. And that's simply because many people are unaware of this issue. They're unaware that this fake drug crisis is in fact a crisis. Awareness of counterfeit medicine is so low in some countries that even the country pharmacists and hospitals administering the drugs aren't even aware of the issues. These aren't issues that they learn about in medical school and they're definitely not issues that we hear about every day in our evening news. It's a problem that works by stealth and until we can fix that, it will only continue to cause us more and more harm. 
All right, so now we're all probably thinking, thanks Amy for delivering all of this news. I'm now officially afraid to purchase uh, Tylenol from CVS down the street. What can we do to fight back? Well, my goal today is not necessarily to scare you. Rather, I wanted to show you how big this problem actually is and why we're needing to use all the latest technology out there to solve it. With the problem as big as counterfeit medicine, there have been many solutions that have been brought to the table. And in recent years, we've seen the advances in new science and technology to combat fake drugs. Specifically, we're seeing the use cases of artificial intelligence and machine learning, and combining that with simple portable devices and testing equipment so easy to use that the average patient could actually test for the authenticity of their product with just a click of their button on their cell phone. So here's an example of how it works. It's pretty much a four-step solution. So first, a patient, when they go into their local pharmacy store, they would simply scan the product or the drug before they purchase it. And they'll scan it with a spectrometer. This is the testing device. And what a spectrometer does is it shines radio frequency waves on the product itself, on the pill, so that it reflects back the chemical composition of the drug itself. The chemical composition is actually called a chemical signature. So if you scan a fake drug, you'll get one set of signature. If you scan a real drug, you'll get another set of signature, and then you'll be able to compare the two. And what happens is after the uh, consumer scans the pill, that s chemical signature will then be compared to a control database of authentic signatures for that particular drug. And then through some cutting edge artificial intelligence, as well as machine learning, within under 10 seconds, a patient would be informed on their cell phones that, there we go, that the drug uh, uh, is the authenticity of that drug. So this is pretty much how it works. A patient would scan the pill and then immediately on their phone, they would receive a notification informing them whether or not that drug that they just scanned is real or fake. And so on the back end now, all of the data is being fed up to the an artificial intelligence platform. And it's pretty much utilizing deep learning and machine learning algorithms in order to map out where in the world we're more likely to see fake drugs. And if a drug is fake, then back Back in the United States, the solution would work with the global pharmaceutical companies, the hospitals, and the regulators in order to trace back the drug supply chain. And so that's how it works. Does this solution actually work in real life? Well, we've been encouraged by the successes that we've seen so far. Let's take a look at a case study with a pharmaceutical foundation in Ghana. So in Africa, the most counterfeited drug there is actually anti-malarial pills. Malaria is one of the most prevalent diseases in Africa. It kills half a million people a year. And the drug itself is very expensive. And so many people go to um, hospitals and secondary markets to procure cheaper, lower cost medication. So this device is now being used across 10 facilities in Ghana to authenticate the supply chain of these pills coming in before they're being fed into the hospital supply chain, to the pharmacies, and into the hands of the consumers. And in just two months, with just one device, this um, spectrometer has already identified thousands of fake and substandard drugs that have been infiltrated the supply chain and has since, been, since then been removed. And really, that's the impact that we've seen in two months. Imagine the impact that we can have in two years. And while you're imagining, the possibilities of the solution go beyond authenticating counterfeit drugs. A lot of people started asking, if you can scan a drug, can you also scan food? How about liquid? How about the skin? And the answer is yes. In fact, the solution is currently being used to um, scan for harmful preservatives in frozen food. It's being used to um, by the healthcare regulators and the police department in order to authenticate opioid and narcotic drugs. And it's also currently being tested on the skin to identify moisture in the skin. So in the future, imagine if you're going into get a facial, being able to scan your face and identify where you're more likely to get wrinkles. That's really the, the way of of our future. <laughs> so, so pretty much the, t the science and technology behind all of this is really exciting and really amazing. Um, but we don't necessarily need one of these devices in order to um, protect ourselves or make a difference. Because what we need more than the testing device itself and more than anything else is actually awareness. 
awareness of the counterfeit drug crisis, awareness not only down the supply chain to consumers, but also up the supply chain to the pharmacies selling the drugs, awareness up the supply chain to the hospitals and nurses administering the drugs, and finally to the manufacturers producing the drugs. We need the entire global community to be aware of the real dangers of fake drugs because knowledge is power, and in this case, it can save lives. You can avoid becoming a victim of counterfeit medicine by just educating yourself on the dangers of fake drugs. Next time when friends or family decide to buy medication online or when they're traveling abroad and want to purchase medicine, well, start asking questions. If we all do the hard work to fight this problem, then the world that we create will be one in which we can all trust the medicine that we're taking. It'll be a world in which the medicine that we take will only make us well and not make us sick. And at the end of the day, isn't that what medication should always be about? Thank you.